Alright everyone, welcome to the Crucible cast. My name is Alex Watkins and I'm here as your host today. And I'm joined by... Brad Andrews. And... Josh Massey. Alright, welcome along. Uh, we've got four topics we're going to go through today. Uh, if you check out the timestamps, will be below in the comments. Uh, but without further ado, let's kick it off because we want to talk prizes and we have Josh here to talk prizes. So, we, have we work with lots of different vendors, lots of different things, but we have one partner we're going to work with mm -hmm. even more than we have done in the past, and we're going to show us some of the things coming this year. Right. Yep. So, most of you are probably already aware of Game Genic. They've been doing the fancy deck boxes, the, the vaults, and if you have the Keyforge sleeves, those are Game Genic sleeves. Yep. Yep. So, you already know the quality. Fantastic we love them. Stuff. Fantastic oh, yeah. stuff, and since it's made specifically for Keyforge, you get some of the lovely, lovely touches that they put in. Yeah. Yeah. I love being able to see what deck is in my deck box without having to open it. It's nice and fabulous. Well, yeah. And having the sleeves the exact right size for the cards, too, is that also helps. very important. <laughs> so we like working with them. We like their product. So we're going to continue working that, with them for OP. Mm -hmm. So we are going to be doing basically all of next year's competitive series is going to have something game genic wise when it comes wow. to our sleeves. And, and you've got a bunch of sleeves for an entire year to show us? Yep, sleeves I mean, for the entire not year. Not the physical sleeves. You've got no, 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 no. We don't have them yet, but we know what they're going to look like. Everything so far is approved. We may change a thing or two up because, you know, we can and we just want to keep you guys on your toes. But the plan right now is to have wherever this fancy, we'll just somewhere on the screen, we've got our Sanctum sleeves coming for our store championships. Ooh. And it's a gorgeous looking piece, as you can see. Um, these are all from things that you haven't seen yet. So Wait, There's just... a Sanctum thing in something we haven't seen yet? Brad. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so then we've got, um, and I don't know the names of all of these art pieces or cards, but we've got cool guys don't look at explosions over here from Lone Oh, Lone. yeah. <laughs> so we're just walking away from this explosion. <laughs> that is going to be in one of our Prime kits. And I'm very excited for that. Love mm -hmm. the piece. And then we've got this, I don't know, very angry disc toad. Very, very angry. Disc toad? Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a disc toad to me. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. Uh, Who knows? It could be a disc toad. Very yeah. angry. Very <laughs> angry disc toad. Okay. And that one's going to show up in our grand championships. Mm. And then for worlds, we've got something that we were just talking about a little bit before. We're not going to give you any more information on it that... You know, you, you'll figure it out later. Yeah. But we've got this other Logos creature that is going to be very exciting when and it comes I would say that it's ultra cool. Oh! oh hey, yay! Inside oh. jokes! No one gets it! All right. <laughs> People love that. That's all that matters. So, yeah. In addition to that, that's for our main series of events. We are going to have our first Vault Warrior sleeves mm -hmm. showing yep. up. Wonderful. So, yep, they've got the really cool art piece the from... Vault Warrior. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I think it's going to be a point of pride for players being able to show, I got the Vault Warrior sleeves. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. And like Alex said, it's really cool that it's the Vault Warrior mm -hmm. from the RPG. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's really exciting mm -hmm. that that kind of ties together. And then we have the sleeves, the so that this. when you're wearing your hat, and your sweater, and your scarf, and your socks, I'm so excited you can also have socks. your sleeves, can and just, your play mat. Can I just take those home? Um, uh, no. 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 Oh. <laughs> I'm not even Shoot. allowed to take this home, this is staying here. Yeah, nobody's going to want to wear it after you. Yeah. Same with that hat. So I can keep it. <laughs> no. no. So then, in addition to those sleeves, we've got our completed set. So we've had the Vault Warrior sleeves. Mm -hmm. We've had a set for each house. Oh, the Vault, the vault Tour. Yeah. Or sorry, Vault yeah. Tour sleeves. <laughs> Correct that one. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got our Vault Tour sleeves. Yep. And because we just had the seven houses before, we yep. needed to add two more. two more. So we've got our Saurian and our Star Alliance and the coming to theme, join. Yep, the same theme yeah. where they're separated out and mm -hmm. you've got a few different art I, pieces. I love those. You know, there's so many wonderful art pieces in Keyforge. I, I almost hate to only put one. On my right. card back. Yep. Right. But don't mix them because then it's not tournament league. Yeah. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that at all. All right. Please. So super excited. We'll have some more stuff to talk about with Game Genic in the future. Right. Of uh, course. We've got some really cool stuff coming when we start announcing some more of our prizes. Mm -hmm. But it was really cool to be able to share some of the art for the sleeves. We love their quality and to be able to work with them to make something a bit more customized is really exciting. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. And so talking about um, Keyforge in general, we had a new set launch in case someone didn't notice. Did, Wait, yeah. when you did that this? What? Oh, like a few weeks ago, I think. Uh, yeah, did yeah, you right, notice? Right, something like that. Uh, yeah. I was busy playing Keyforge. I forgot. Oh, yeah. right. Cool. Uh, so Worlds Collide came out at the beginning of the month. Uh, and with it, we had a vault tour in Indianapolis. Yes. Sealed vault tour like we like to try and do when a new set mm -hmm. comes out. 
Uh, and we have a few numbers to share with you from the event. So uh, it was sealed, so there's, there's things to take into account with these numbers. One, it's a sealed vault tour. Like we've said before, there's limited choice, so it doesn't necessarily tell us everything about what people want to play. But I think it also gets into what they're most excited well, to engage exactly, with. Exactly, especially with the new sets. The other thing is it's a new set. So there's a lot of new, ha there's two new houses, lots of new mm -hmm. cards. People aren't necessarily sure what's competitive yet. But if we look at the most played house on day one, I don't think any of us are surprised. Uh, the Saurians. I really like, wanted Star Alliance, but Star I yeah, very okay. much understand but, Saurians. But even with that, Star Alliance <laughs> right, took right, third no, great yeah, showing one. as well. And that's what it's like, 22% nearly of the field played Saurian, mm -hmm. which is crazy. It's nuts. Um, <laughs> we saw a, a normal kind of showing for Shadows, around 17% of the field, lots of people still comfortable with Shadows. Yep. And then third, just edging out Logos, was Star Alliance. Mm -hmm. So to me, that I look at that and I go, players had two new houses, they wanted to play with the new shiny stuff, right. but people also still wanted to lean on shadows. They, they, people are comfortable with what shadows do, how they behaved in both Call of the Ark on Age of Ascension, stealing is yeah. good. Uh, still, still the most still, efficient way to right. get Amber. Yeah, right. But downplayed a little bit in the set, not as obnoxious and lots of ways around stealing. It's, it's different. And again, mm -hmm. that's, that's part of our, one of our... It's so one of our design goals is that houses feel different in each set. They'll still feel familiar in many ways, but they'll have something new and interesting and a different angle on them. Mm -hmm. And it'll make it so you have that sense of discovery mm -hmm. all over again. And then if we look at conversion to day two, um, <laughs> Sorion actually went up. So it went from 22% on day one to 28% on day two. So not only were people enjoying playing mm -hmm. Sorions, they were doing well. Yep, yep. The other big riser was Star Alliance, went from around 15% up to 20%. Yep. Now, to me, again, in a vacuum, I wasn't at the event, this is not only are people excited to play with the new cards, people don't know how to deal with them just yet, mm -hmm. and they're getting surprised by, wait, what does that do? That does what? And, oh, I'm in trouble. Yep. Well, and, and like Keyforge is so important to understand what are the most powerful cards on the board? Mm -hmm. What do I need to take care of? What do I need to immediately answer? And... That game knowledge is just starting to get out there, which right. is, again, part of our, 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 our hope that players are out there discovering the new awesome cards and awesome combinations. Yeah, that makes me really hopeful for our first arc on Vault Tours, where we start to see all of the sets available and yeah. whether we see yeah. that same impact of Sauron and Starlights mm -hmm. edging into the meta and starting to dominate some yeah. events. That'll be only time will tell, but I think it'll be interesting to see. Well, yeah. I think, and then some of our, our, our rates for some of our other houses are really fascinating well, too. I, I like that. Grobnar, Dis, and Untamed basically stayed the same, give or take, mm -hmm. from day one to day two. They went up or down a little bit, but nothing major. Logos saw a fairly big drop from around 15% down to 9%. Mm -hmm. But I think our biggest surprise really was how Shadows converted. Went from yeah. 17 down to 11. And that's normally Shadows we either see maintain or go up. It's very rare to see Shadows go down from day one to day two. And I think part of that is we've designed more cards that are anti-steel. Mm -hmm. We have cards in Saurian, Logos, and Untamed that are very good at stopping their opponent from stealing yeah. or punishing them for doing so. Mm -hmm. And this is something that's, that's different about Worlds Collide. And I think it provides this really interesting environment where stealing is risky. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this shows exactly people were running into that. They'd, they'd do their normal play of just steal as much as they could and then they get slammed for it. Right. Or they'd be all geared up to steal without realizing that the meta was gonna be turned against them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, that's only a little snapshot for you. We're gonna be working with our development team to be able to pull out much more interesting reports moving forwards. Yep. So watch this space. I'm hoping to be able to share a lot more with you after future events, especially in 2020, where we're gonna have lots of interesting things to be able to share with everyone. Okay. So watch this space for that. But for now, some numbers for you guys to, to dwell on. Um, and moving on to topic number three for today, uh, which is, well, I don't know if I want to do this. No, I don't think we should talk about oh, it Oh, I want you to do it. No, 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 no. You we'll tell you after we film. So we're they gonna, don't need to We're going to talk about the most asked rule questions in a minute with you, Brad. But the most asked question I get at the moment is when is the World Championships? Oh, I thought it was going to be how warm is that hat? Oh, well, I don't know. They might ask you that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. That's what they've yeah, been asking. Hey, hey, hey Alex. <laughs> when are the World Championships? Can I say coming soon? No. Yes. Okay, so let's recap what we've said about the World Championships to start yes. off with. Uh, it's going to be a team event. Uh, you need one invite for the team. So if we were a team, only one of us would need an invite. We can all come along and play. Uh, there'll be some sort of a rewarding mechanism for individuals as well. So if mm -hmm. your team doesn't make day two, there's going to be an individuals event for day two as well, which we'll talk more about in the future. So we'll go into details on what that is soon in the future. Coming soon, this the <laughs> scheduling. Um, we've also mentioned there's going to be in the Twin Cities. 
in May was what we said, I believe, before. Well, if we didn't, we just did. We just did. Well, so we're going to go into May. slightly more details <laughs> Please? than that. Yeah, it's going to be in May. But it's going to be in St. Paul. So not just the Twin Cities. It's going to be downtown St. Paul at the River Center. We've used that yep. event before. It's we a great it. venue. Beautiful venue. Tons of great places to eat around there. View of the river. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. Some of the best restaurants in the Twin Cities area are actually just yep. a short walk from there. So really excited to run the event there. And yeah, we said it was in May. Mm -hmm. Do we tell them when? Yes. Nah. Yes. 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 It's like May two little enough. devils on my shoulder, I mean, like angel and devil. Kind of. May is so far away. May they don't May. need to know yet. All right, let's give them the dates. So, All right, um, fine. It's going to be the <laughs> 7th to the 9th of May. So that is the 7th to the 9th. Heard it here first. Ryan, add some bling, flashing lights. Woo! Probably we're going to get a banner. That uh, oh, yeah, the budget cuts. Yeah, um, well, that happens. <laughs> I used the confetti gun before the filming. So oh, that was in the rehearsal, gone. yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> gotcha. Um, and those of you who are keen on their dates will know that's actually a Thursday to Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, the Sunday is Mother's Mothering Day here in, in the U.S., uh, and it kind of links in nicely. We like to try and give people a bit more travel time to get home. Yep. You can chill out in the Twin Cities, explore the area. There's more of America. There's multiple things you can do around here if you want to do that on the Sunday or go and chill out with your mom and spend Mother's Day together. Uh, those of you who are traveling across the Atlantic, get an extra day to get back and maybe get a full day, full week in the office when you get back. So creates a bit of a different environment. We're experimenting with tournaments that end on Saturday with a yep. Sunday side event or Sunday closed day. And this is kind of a, a roll on from that that people have seen at some yeah, of our yeah. other events. Uh, but super excited to be able to tell you. Seventh to the ninth. River Center, St. Paul. It's going to be great fun. Yeah, it is. And some other exciting stuff. Oh, yeah. At the prize wall at the World Championship, we're going to have some exclusive World Championship prizes that you're only going to be able to get yeah. at the World Championship. Mm -hmm. No details at the moment, mm -hmm. but it's exciting stuff. Yeah. When I get to keep things secret. I get to keep things secret. This yeah. one's mine. Yeah, <laughs> Josh will share that with you in the future. But what's really cool is not only will we have exclusive new things that can only be got at Worlds, we're going to have, that's only actually a small percentage of the new things in the prize wall. Mm -hmm. right. A lot of the stuff is not going to be branded as Worlds. It's not going to be branded as Vault Tour. It's just going to be Keyforge OP branded. And we'll start to move this further mm -hmm. afield. You're going to see, hopefully see more prize walls in 2020 appearing yep. in more places with stuff that isn't Vault Tour, isn't Worlds, but is cool, organized play prizes. Right. Mm -hmm. So very excited to be rolling that out next year, something that we've been wanting to do for a while. Yep. And um, we're really excited for that. So yeah. more prizes, mm -hmm. easier to get to. Yep. Sounds like wins for players. Oh, it's going to be <laughs> yeah. great. And that's, that's kind of going to close off our first season. We've had kind of an elongated first season of organized mm -hmm. play because of getting around to Worlds. Yep. But we'll be able to tie that up and then we'll fit into a normal kind of annual season moving forward, right. which would be great. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. and that, that's, that was Worlds. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so the Pretty last thing I want to do is, while we've got Brad here, is ask him the four most asked questions to the, the rules inbox. Yes, we've been getting a ton of new questions coming in, and we've been taking time to focus on those since the release of Worlds Collide. But these are the four most asked questions we've had. All right, let's start at the top with question number one. It said, if my opponent has a Gargantodon, and I have no creatures in play, and then I play an event that says Steel Amber, Mm -hmm. What happens? So, Gargantodon's effect is a replacement effect, meaning it entirely replaces the, the normal effect with mm -hmm. a different thing. So, Gargantodon says that when you steal, you capture instead. This means that you're just capturing when you try and steal. And if you don't have any creatures when you try and capture, you don't capture, because okay. it has no place to go. Yeah, that's fair. So, in this case, nothing happens. All right. Yep, pretty good card, Gargantico. Yeah, if you yeah. can keep your opponent's board stay down and block that guy out. Definitely great card. against shadows, I think. Uh, yeah. Honestly, <laughs> an honestly, example of one of these cards. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so question number two. If I attack uh, a creature that has both hazardous and elusive, uh, and then the hazardous destroys my creature's attacking, mm -hmm. have we now turned off elusive? Have we kind of pushed that barrier? Or is elusive still a thing for a future attack? Right. So, yes, you've turned off elusive. You got into a fight, but... That'll pop the elusive bubble, if you will, um, but the the creature will still die from hazardous. Right. So yeah. you can you can attack with another creature, and assuming it survives yeah. hazardous, it might be able to. And I think off. this question's been coming up a lot because of Star Alliance's ability to give out both hazardous and elusive. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's a nice easy one. Clear that up. That's good to yeah. know. Yep. Uh, of course, when Star Alliance do it, it tends to be on something with a bunch of other. <laughs> it's, it's pretty big. Good luck getting Ultron. through that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so question number three uh, again, talking about hazardous. If I attack a hazardous three creature with reassembling automaton, get that right, Got it. Uh, will combat still happen? 
Yes. Again, this comes into replacement effects. Reassembling automatons' ability is a replacement effect. So it says when it would be destroyed, something else happens, which means it's never actually destroyed. So the process of that attack never actually stops. Right, so if I attack with it, it kind of moves, mm -hmm. but it's still gonna finish its fight. It never, it never stopped attacking. It That's never right. left play and it never became a new object because the destruction entirely replaced. Destruction, yeah. by so the it's rules- it's just ducking and weaving. <laughs> yeah, that, by the rules- never, so good. <laughs> the destruction never happened. I'm gonna go back and look through all my decks for this creature. Yeah, I know, I know seriously. <laughs> Oh, he's got his big brother too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, uh, the that's the um, reassembling. Oh, the, it's the self bolstering. Self bolstering automata. Automata. Which is going right. to get too stronger every time. Ooh, okay. Yeah. That's a cool mechanic in the. Yeah. Like the okay. Fun cards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the the final question is about my favorite creature. I know you like it. I'm pretty sure you're a fan of it. And that is collector one. Uh, so uh, collector one, can it archive if the target dies? If not, does that contradict the rule? Unless an ability explicitly references an out-of-play area, such as hand, deck, archives, or discard mm -hmm. pile, that ability can only interact with cards that are in play. And I see where this question is coming from, but no, Collector Worm will not activate if it destroys the creature it's fighting. Now this is because when that creature is destroyed, it's immediately put into the discard pile, following the, dis the yep. destroy resolution. Mm -hmm. uh, this happens before the fight's even over, and because of that, when Collector Worm's ability tries to go off, it won't even be able to find that card. It's mm -hmm. essentially a new object at that point because it's in a discard pile. It goes, well, I'm trying to do that, but I can't, so I don't. It okay. falls back under the do as much as you can principle. All it right. doesn't violate that because again, that's taking into place objects in play and it doesn't know where it is anymore. Right, okay, so that's good to know that yeah. uh, if you do actually destroy something with a collector worm, as, as unlikely as that's gonna be, yes. you yeah. don't get to archive it. Unless it's a self-bolstering or... <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. Yes. Then we've got a whole good different can of worms. <laughs> yes, yeah. definitely. Can, can right. of worms, come on, come on. Uh, <laughs> come on, guys, I got nothing for that. <laughs> can I'm you sorry. edit in some crickets? <laughs> <laughs> like a tumbleweed rolling across <laughs> the next level. Perfect. All right, well, that brings us to the end of this episode of The Crucible Cast. Uh, as always, thank you very much for joining us, and you can follow us on uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, if you have any rules questions, like the ones we've just answered, uh, please head to kfrules at fantasyflightgames.com. We'll answer them as quickly as we can. Fantastic. Uh, so that ends it for today. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we'll be back again for one final one this year in December. Uh, for everyone in America, have a great Thanksgiving, uh, and we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Bye.